the Million Dollar Mortgage Experience Podcast. All right, welcome to this episode. Today we're with Kimberly Cole. She is a seasoned real estate professional based in San Diego and the founder of Heritage Homes. Thanks for joining me. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. This is just a full circle moment to be here with you. This is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so... Tell us about how you got into the real estate business. Yeah, so um, I always was fascinated with real estate since I was a little kid. I would look in the newspaper and just look at listings and always just was fascinated by it. And my grandfather had a real estate brokerage and everyone in my family had a real estate license. It was always kind of in my blood and there. Mm -hmm. And um, throughout college, I worked in different facets of real estate, had an opportunity to work with short sales and really as a admin Mm -hmm. assistant, different roles, different roles in leadership in different companies. And it wasn't until I became a mom and was home with my kids that I was like, I need to get out of here and I need to go do something for myself and um, kind of find, ha have my own identity, essentially, not just being mom at home. And That's cool. and um, what happened was it was actually like all those moms that I was networking with and going to play dates with and so forth. I was, at the time was um, doing real estate part time, working open houses for an agent and just really like doing real estate just to get out of the house because I was yeah. trying to find have that. A I, break. Yeah, I have a little break. And um, a lot of my friends had said, hey, my husband's, you know, we want to expand. We want a bigger home. We want to move. And we want you to find us a house. And I was like, cool. oh, you know, I, yeah. So You're it all new, just it just you know, it just sure. led with a, a few friends. And honestly, I had set out to be like, pretty much every other real estate agent in San Diego thinking, oh, I'll just sell like three houses a year and it's a side thing. And that's sure. really what our industry is in San Diego because the threshold is so high and it's so competitive right. to get in. And I ended up selling 17 houses my first year. Wow. And I was the rookie of the year that's for cool. the San Diego Association of Realtors. And I, when I, I just fell in love with the business. I fell in love with the people. I loved the, the competition. I loved mm -hmm. the high of it. And I really just love the the thrill of getting somebody a house when it, you know you just you really have to be their advocate. Totally. And that was really what got me into the business. What so, year was it again? Twenty seventeen. Okay, so yeah, the, it was probably was it easier to buy a house in twenty seventeen yes. as far as like inventory, right? It mm -hmm. was like way different. Yeah, I mean back then you would show a client six or seven houses, mm -hmm. and you actually thought then there wasn't a lot of inventory. You're like, oh, right. sorry. You had to write like, a letter, like a cover letter. Yes, you yeah. wrote a letter with a photo, <laughs> like all right. these things that it's our industry changes so much in just a matter of years. Yeah, because you um, can't do photos you anymore. You can't do right? photos anymore. Yeah. You can't do love letters. And uh, yeah, so we definitely, I mean, we, I started off with just um, working in a luxury office. Mm -hmm. And I loved it because that gave me the confidence to break into luxury. Yeah. And so my first few sales were actually in the million dollar price point. Nice. And, you know, now we have to look, you know, we laugh because that's entry level here in San Diego, right? <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Like a million dollar house, but it has one bedroom and no mm -hmm. yard. You're like, yeah, right. It's crazy. Yeah. So that used to be a lot of people's goals of say, I want to break into the luxury business. And now it's not, you know, it's, it's different here in San Diego. Yeah. And I think a lot of parts of the country. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, you still can buy a, a starter home and that's under five hundred thousand in, in multiple states, but mm -hmm. you go like even anywhere nice in like Nashville, Tennessee, you, yeah, you're, you're gonna spend over that, right, right, or like Austin or any you know yeah. any pretty good city that's that you'd want to move to at least, right. Yeah. So it's not necessarily selling a luxury real estate; it's selling a luxury lifestyle now. Yeah. So when I am marketing a property. We used to put all the effort into the actual property yeah. with really high-end luxury videos. And now we are putting all of our marketing money in actually the neighborhood, the mm. community, what are the clubs, what are the amenities. People are buying into a lifestyle. Rather than asking like, oh, is the kitchen upgraded? They want to know how close is it to Whole Foods? Mm. You know, I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. that's what a buyers are looking for now. How much traffic am I going to mm -hmm. hit? Yeah. How close to the beach? How close? Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 definitely turned how we market properties now. Interesting. In the last couple of years. Yeah, because there's so few listings now. It's just like, it, I can only imagine, 
you're are you have more of a listing agent or a buyer's agent or both? Um, it's about 50 50. Okay. So some years it's right now it's 50 50. Last year it was seventy uh, percent listings, thirty percent buyers. So it it teeters, but yeah. I really enjoy working with buyers, and I think it's great for agents to also focus on working with buyers because that is a long term business plan because those buyers are going to eventually turn around and sell one day. Yeah. And um, it's also you're able to stay in touch with them, offer them value if they need a refinance. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. you have a reason to call them. Where listings, they generally move out of the area if they're moving out of California. So right, and you're like, Bye. yeah, it's hard to your, stay. Can't yeah. do your deal. I can do your sale, but can't. Do yeah, your, yeah. But you can refer. Right. And stuff like that. Yeah, I, absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. Let's tell us about Heritage. Yeah, so Heritage Homes started in 2021, and I was uh, I was approached by a lot of different brokers and firms to come and join their company, and I had this great um, new business model with a company called Side, based out in the Bay Area, where they come alongside an agent and they partner with them, and it's all about their brand. And mm. so what they do is they work with you in what's important to you in your business and help you create your brand, your image. And they do all the heavy lifting as far as the broker compliance and so forth. So, That's nice. yeah, so it's, yeah, I really, yeah, it's, it's super nice because, you know, when you always have to have an exit strategy and a lot of people don't necessarily have an exit strategy when it comes to selling. They think they're just going to sell real estate forever. Yeah. But um, rather than selling your book of business, you have to look at it as, are you going to be selling your brand? Are you going to be mm. selling your company? Yeah. And that's going to be way more profitable when you decide Time to comes. retire, yeah. right? Than just selling like, here's my, um, some my agents, yeah, here's my client list. <laughs> Give me $2 for exactly, that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Where, when you're building a brand and an actual company, it's yeah. going to be way more profitable um, long That's term, true. and cool. and it's also better, you know, to have a brand and an image that is contributing back to the community and is vested yeah. in the community. That's so. Cool. That's a lot of our brand is it's really heavily focused on giving back to the community. Nice. Yeah. So do you have a team or tell us about yeah. that? Yeah. So I have um, a marketing assistant. Okay. I have a client care coordinator and I have a few buyer's agents on my team and also nice. a transaction coordinator. Cool. So yeah, it's we're growing and it's it's a tough mar uh, market to get in as far as if you're a buyer's agent because there's just not a lot of inventory. Yeah. So um, I really enjoy training new agents and if they want to come alongside me, they have an opportunity to really see how I keep my clients and retention wise and what I do. And so it's a great opportunity for new agents who want to come alongside and see how I do it. Are you hiring? I am hiring. All right. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so do you have a niche in your business? I know that they say the niche makes you rich, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it sounds like you have a couple of little niches. Yeah. Course. So, I mean, past clients are really where a bulk of my business comes from mm -hmm. and my niche really is it's where I'm doing life and where I'm doing life is where I'm in the middle of the trenches of being a parent to two small kids in elementary school a lot of my clients are living the same exact lifestyle and I'm able to relate to families that are looking in the Poway Unified School District so Poway is my my niche and you know I'm from Poway just like you yep. John yep. and Poway, so shout out <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I do definitely have a niche working with families and helping them place their kids in schools and getting connected. And then I also recently just started working in the area of bankruptcy listings. Okay. Yeah. So that's that been trending up or is that um what's funny is all the economics are saying there's a lot of defaults on auto loans and mm. defaults on credit cards. Mm -hmm. Um we haven't seen that quite yet hit. It's these are but just those are the precursors for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are just cases that the attorneys I've been working with, there is a property in their portfolio and it's been something where the case has been going on for years and now they need to liquidate that property as part of the, the case and settle. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been doing a lot of that. Those properties, um, it, it's a long time frame. So you're in it for the long haul because you have to wait for court approval. Yeah. And so... Um, that's not a quick sale that's going to happen in 21 days. That's right. going to usually take about 90 days Yeah, makes sense for court approval. And then a lot of times we're the boots on the ground, working with the tenants, the property manager, helping the tenants get out, and then getting it prepped for the market. So it's a lot of uh, pre-beforehand, pre-listing work before mm -hmm. it goes on the market. And then a lot of the properties are in distress, so they make... Um, there's a lot of investors that that come after these bankruptcy listings. That's cool. So, yeah. 
What about seniors and military? I think you do a little of that too. Yeah, well. Totally two different sides of the business. Being in Rancho Bernardo, Mm -hmm. where it primarily a 55 and up community. Actually, it's the demographic has changed so much because a lot of those um, communities, we still have two pockets, Oaks North and Seven Oaks, um, that are 55 and up zone. However, a lot of new families are moving in because, you know, we had Apple move to Rancho Bernardo. So really? we had a lot of, yeah, a lot I of. I knew they there. moved to yeah. say they didn't know what, what area, but yeah. Rancho Bernardo. So huh? they're, yeah, they're on the west side of Rancho Bernardo. And so we've had a lot of executives come into Rancho Bernardo because of the schools. And so anyhow, going back to Rancho Bernardo 55 and up community, um, I have a designation working with seniors through the National Association of Realtors. It's a senior real estate specialist. And that's important for um, seniors because they know that I've been through a lot of courses and how to work with seniors, how to place them yeah. into independent or assisted living. I work with a lot of estate planners and also people who do estate sales. So I'm essentially like your one-stop shop when you're looking to move to that next phase of life. Yeah. And if that's, you know, liquidating everything in your house. Um, and it's a lot of emotion, too, for seniors. Yeah. Because, you know, they're losing a little bit of their independence by True. giving up their home. Right. And so, a lot of them have lived for a long time mm-hmm. in their home. Yeah. 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 So they're, they're losing their independence. They're losing, like, all the memories, mm-hmm. you know, and... And they're, I mean, they're losing memories too. Yeah, right? yeah. They're losing the memories of their house and their, their yeah. kind of safe space in a way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And um, you have to have like a lot of patience, you know, essentially because it's yeah. on their timeline and yeah. don't want to be rushed. Mode with no. Like all the technology at their fingertips. There might be like, you know, how, let me get my glasses and yeah. you know, all those things yeah. that they have to do. But that it's so, it's so beautiful too to be able because that's a lost aspect of our business is to sit down with a client and go through the paperwork. Just sitting down with a client is a lost art of (laughs) of, of any business these days, which is sad. Yeah. Because that was like such a cool part of when I got in the mortgage business. I was like very much Mm face-to-face, very much drive. We call them lookups. We drive through, and I I lived up in Santa Rosa, so we would drive through Napa. And I didn't drink wine back then Mm -hmm. because I was like, you know, just young and just didn't didn't really have an appreciation for wine but i would drive through napa and i just wouldn't even look at the vineyards now like i go through napa Mm -hmm. i'm like this is like the such a beautiful place but like sitting down with the client going to see them sitting them across from them them hearing what their needs are yeah versus just like a transaction right right? do you think it happened because of covid john like that we don't do face to face or do you think it was the technology with docusign and and like i think it will maybe I think for sure technology has yeah. shifted everything. Yeah. But then I think COVID exasperated that, mm-hmm. made it worse. You know? Right. Yeah. It's 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 good and bad, and mm-hmm. it's good because it's easier, but it's bad because then there's no relationship. But the people that are doing the relationship thing are winning, mm-hmm. like way more than the tech. I mean, the technology. If you did both and you could integrate them together, I think you could totally win yeah. in this market. But right. it's very difficult to for most people because they get lazy they just send mm-hmm. a link off I mean, especially mm-hmm. in the mortgage business we send a link off fill out this application well the application was like the number one way to build rapport right with a client because you get to spend time talking about their dependents their job how long they're at their job yeah. what do they like about their job all their other you know and it just goes into the whole the whole rapport building the whole relationship building thing of just sitting across from someone and or even just on the phone mm-hmm. but like you know with with covid you could still do the fa- the FaceTime and the yeah. Zoom that became big, but it doesn't. There's no energy ex- tra- um, exchange. Right. It's so. It's like watching a screen, which is very odd. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. Not natural. One of the things a lot of clients tell me later on, uh, why they chose to work with me is one of the first questions I ask them is, "What are you looking for in a real estate agent? What is mm-hmm. important to you?" And they they, they always say. No one asks that question. They yeah. just go right into like, what do you want? And mm. it's really like, what's important to you? Yeah, what, what are you, you looking, looking for? for? So I think, you know, being really good at asking questions yeah. is you have to have that skill when you don't, can't ask questions and you're just, it, yeah, <laughs> good luck, well, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And I think just even like in relationships mm-hmm. in general or like meeting people, networking, if you're not asking questions, mm-hmm. you're really going to leave that conversation or that encounter yeah with a 
poor view of you. Like right. you're, the other person's going to have a poor view of you because you didn't ask them any questions. Yeah. And people don't like inter- ch- or talking with someone if they're not going to ask them any questions. It just yeah. seems very like self-centered or selfish, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But we become this like society where most people don't engage. Mm-hmm. They don't turn around and ask a question. Mm-hmm. And so the person asking the questions usually is is kind of like left sort of like bummed about because yeah. the energy exchange is totally yeah. one-sided. Yeah, I totally see that. And I, I don't know what it is with our society that has become that way. Right. Like I see more, I talk to more people that are like that Yeah. every day. Like yeah. it's, it's not good. But even just in the communication, I mean, I had a business coach and said, if they use emojis, you got to use emojis. Yeah. Like, it's like mirror, <laughs> mirroring, right? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So um, <laughs> learning all of that, that's a whole new, yeah, just how technology has changed our communication process but i think those of us that go back to the basics always went to yeah. and going back to you know the roots of this business is relationships and yeah so forth and i'm i'm thinking more too about your question because covid was really scary for people mm-hmm. and some people mm-hmm. like i would say most people some people like you know i'm not i'm just saying facts like mm-hmm. i didn't really I, I, my demographic, my age group. Yeah. I did a lot of research right out the gate. Like, oh, what's my risk of dying? 0.01%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if I got COVID. I had COVID. I, it wasn't that big of a deal for me, mm-hmm. thankfully. And so, like, I still went and lived my life. Like, mm-hmm. I was obviously careful around older people or my yeah. parents or whatever. But I wasn't worried about COVID. Mm-hmm. So, like, it didn't really change my view of how to interact with people. But mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are, were so worried about COVID that they would – wear masks and then it just that completely strips your person like yeah a personable approach from per, mm-hmm. you know if you have a mask on you can't see their expressions mm-hmm. you can't it was really an odd time yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, thankful yeah. we're not in that anymore oh my gosh i'll never forget like the middle of covid i had a, a i don't even know i it was a it was a random lead like i didn't know the person at all yeah and so um i'll never forget this john and this is like we all have these like moments during COVID yeah. that we'll never forget. And I remember going to her house and it was a listing appointment. And she asked that I wear a double mask and she wore a double mask and she had the heater on and I was just sweating. It was so hot <laughs> in there. And just like, are we really doing this? Or do you really want me to sell can your we house? Just, can we go yeah, outside yeah, maybe exactly. And... So yeah, the one of the things that has, and you guys have a beautiful office, but our, a lot of agents offices, a lot of agents offices are at their houses. Mm-hmm. One of the things that happened as a result of COVID is it's really hard to get people to come into the office. Yeah, it really and is. it's really hard to get clients to come into the office. And you're you when you're trying to show your value and like right. you know, hey, let's come come to my office. I have a great office. I'd love for you to. It's in the heart of Rancho Bernardo, where I'm at. And and they're like, let's just go to the house. <laughs> yeah. like, wait, like let's you know. So <laughs> you have to be a little I'm bit legit. And then I've spent all this time, yeah, and money, and effort yeah. into this. Yeah. But so like, that's one of the things that it was a. And I think also that changed the model, too, where you do see so many hybrid offices now and business models that, you know, there's a lot less overhead um, to pay for for these big fancy offices for in the agent realm. I don't know for you guys. Yeah. Um, And uh, there was a big announcement recently for buyers mm -hmm. agents. Mm -hmm. Do you know much about that? Yes, I do. Uh, (laughs) I'm like I haven't dug into it, so I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Yeah. I mean, I think the the beauty of it is that we now have to have buy. Well, this all doesn't take place until July. Okay. And, you know, my mom always said, and I'm a person of faith, like, don't worry about tomorrow's issues. They're not here. Yeah. So. I'm not spending a lot of energy on this at all. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm just not. not I, yeah, it, so yeah. I'm happy to have a quick conversation about it, but I'm really not spending a lot of thought into this and a lot of energy because there was this conversation six months ago and previously when this lawsuit was filed. So a lot of people have put a lot of energy and time in this and this is how it played out. And it could still play out differently yeah, come July. Yeah, it could or whatever. Right? Yeah, so I don't, but the beauty of it is here's some facts about it is the fact of the matter is that buyers now will need to sign a contract to work with you. And that's nice from yeah. the aspect of you're not going to have people that, you know, fly away or that sure. are using up your Cut time. You out and, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. are serious. So, um, and it's also going to be the buyer's responsibility. They're saying for to, to pay the, the commissions. Mm. Well, I really think that sellers are going to still be creative yeah. and find ways to pay that commission to the buyer's agent. So there's right. what what is open up is a lot of creativity is going to happen mm, in this mm-hmm. business. And a lot of new companies are probably going to be started. And, you know, in, for the MLS, 
there will no longer be this section of what the cooperating broker fee is. Mm. Well, they're just going to get smarter and probably put it somewhere else. Yeah, right. <laughs> so our agents are going to text each other. I mean, there's going to be yeah, or they're going to use... any buyers. Like if the if the thing right. shifts at all, like, like like right now it's been so mm-hmm. flipped, right? Like it's all towards the listing agent. Yeah. Like all towards the seller. It's a seller's market. Mm-hmm. If for some reason it ever flipped or at least got really more kind of neutral, then sellers of course are going to be like I need buyers. Like mm-hmm. give me a bring me a buyer and yeah. I'll yeah, we'll share, you know, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Is it still, are they capping this, the seller's commission too? There's no caps on anything. So it's still so all still negotiable. you still to the seller and then the seller could it's pay your still, corporation yeah. if and he's if, a broker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It's yeah. always been negotiable. It's still negotiable. And I think, you know, you and I both like finer things and we like things that are high quality. Especially and, tequila. Yes, like finer especially. Tequila yes, for thank sure. you. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, my husband and I recently were downtown at an event mm-hmm. and I'm not going to take an Uber, like, I'm not going to take a, a regular Uber. I'm going to take an Uber X and, right. or, you know, like I'm going to take the it, Uber black. Know, black. Is that, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to take the Uber X is what I'm saying. I'm going to take it because I'm going to feel safer getting right. home. They're going to have a TCP license. It's going to be a safer car. Yep. And I think that's going to be exactly, it's just, you, I hate to say this silly saying, you pay for what you get. Yeah. And so most of my clients are busy executives, two working people, yeah. And they're focused on their careers. They're focused on their family. They're not going to w- want to run around trying to find, you know, and, and negotiate on their, you know, a house. Yeah. So, and it's also a liability to the seller. Yeah. So the seller is going to want to sh- make sure that they have proper representation. So I don't see my job going away anytime soon. Right. And I don't see the way how I'm paid to be changed dramatically. I think we just have to get creative. Yeah. So, That's good. I like yeah. your optimism. I love that. Back to the Uber thing, and if anyone has daughters, I have a daughter, yeah. and you have a daughter. Right? Yes, I do. Um, my daughter is, takes Ubers, uh-huh. and someone told me, I think it was in, in, in England or something, that mm-hmm. never let your daughter take a Uber that is not a black. Mm-hmm. Because even if you have to spend the extra money, uh, which I would no matter what anyway, but for her, you know, if she's in college yeah. or whatever, she's not going to want to spend the extra money. I will pay for it. Because they have to go through a whole different licensing. Exactly. They have to have like a professional license versus just like they could sign up for Uber, you know, yesterday and be a complete crazy person or, Mm -hmm. you know, have bad intentions just to find people and be alone with them in their car. So definitely get Uber Black. Yes. Extra money. Yes. Little shout out for Uber's Black. Yeah. And and all that because... It, it's way safer. Yeah, I don't right? want to be in a Ford Focus driving, you know, <laughs> up the five or the fifteen on my way home from a night out, and and have nothing. the person not licensed, and yeah, not like you yeah, know, have more scrutiny exactly. and all that because okay. even if it's if it's a Ford Ford Focus, who cares, <laughs> sure. right? But just as long as it's like someone that you know, yeah, couldn't yeah. have just signed up yesterday, that, yeah, and it's gonna yeah. take you down the wrong dark alley, and you know, you'll never see yeah. someone, you know. You yeah. can tell the mom and me is coming out because I'm all about safety. Like, I want to yes. be in a Volvo or like yeah, a really yeah. safe car. <laughs> I don't want to be in a little car. <laughs> I'm all about, yeah, high safety ratings. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's Absolutely. the mom hat is coming out right now. So, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't even know what a Ford Focus looks like. Yeah. yeah. It's I, probably small. Yeah. I'm, yeah. It's a small car. <laughs> I, I, I just be, yeah, just using that for context, you know, <laughs> yeah, wanting I would, to I just thought of be the, safe. The word as Ford, but like Ford makes pretty cool cars too. Yeah. Mustangs you're right. And you're right. I had a Mustang once. Yeah, you did? Yeah. Was that your first car? No. It was like my my first car was the worst car ever. It was like a poop brown Nissan Sentra. <laughs> it was like, and I was in high school and I'm like, dad, really? This is what, this is a car? And, he, and he's like, well, there's this awesome suit Toyota Supra, but the miles are, you know, yeah. 100,000. And this is a shitty looking brown Nissan that like 4,000 miles. Yeah. Same price. You know, he's like, do you want to? And it is the smart thing to do is get the more reliable yeah. car, but it totally didn't do anything for my high school career. Yeah. Like I was driving and like hiding and parking in the way back so no one saw me. And yeah, but looking back, I think it's probably smart. Did you have to pay for your car? Yeah. Yeah. Me Part too. of it. Yeah. Okay. They helped, but yeah, I had to have a job and yeah, which we made our kids do. Yeah, that's good. No, they didn't pay. We paid for part of it, and they paid part for part yeah. Of it. I think there should definitely be some skin in the game. Always, I love skin in the game. Yeah. Skin in the game in mm-hmm. real estate is huge in when we make our exceptions, like mm-hmm. in our loans and stuff. Yeah. Like if someone's just getting all gift or they're doing cash out and then the cash out's equal down to what they paid for the house um, back in the day, like, mm-hmm. you know, we don't like that. It's just, yeah. it's like there's no skin in the game then. Mm-hmm. So from everything yeah. from 
you know, kids buying cars to real estate and mortgages, you need you need skin in the game. Yeah, even with marketing. I mean, yeah. it's huge. You got to have skin in the game. So. Well, you do as a real estate agent when you're selling, like when you're doing a listing yeah. appointment, right? Do you yeah. talk to them about how much money you're going to spend on marketing or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's definitely a part of the listing appointment is what the marketing and it is, you know, everything again is negotiable, but really right. I'm putting my name on this and especially if it's in my market and I, I look at it as your property is going to help me market to get you know, more listings and, yeah. um, you know, definitely want to make sure that we're going all in. So I, I like to spend money on marketing. I enjoy it. Actually, it's kind of a, a trait that cool. <laughs> I'll spend a little too much on it, but I, <laughs> I, um, I love spending money on video. I mm -hmm. think it's essential and, you, you know, do the drone shots and all that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially when it it's a community that's got golf courses around it or amenities yeah. and you want to show that. So the drone, um, the twilight tours, I mean, we go all in. And uh, when I started, I started out in luxury. So the threshold was really high on the marketing dollar that we spent. And so I will spend that on a mobile home too. Yeah. So I believe everyone deserves to have marketing as a luxury property, yeah. whatever price point it's at. Right. And a little bit different budget. Though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I definitely think that um, it's wise to, spend money on marketing because you're only going to hurt your seller. Yeah. Um, it's going to show, especially like I, people still do really bad photos and it's like, we are in a day yeah. and age with iPhones and well, like, everything why? is photos. Everything is how mm -hmm. like your first impression. Right. right. And what I tell my clients too, is that yes, the buyer will get into escrow, but there's, st we're still selling it with those photos because guess what? The appraiser is looking at those photos, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. if they have questions, they're, they're going to look at the photos. They're going to judge the house by looking at the photos before they come out and do the appraisal. Then right. they're probably going to go back and look through those photos. And then um, the buyer's going to still look at those photos at midnight when they're questioning mm -hmm. if they have cold feet or not. Mm -hmm. And they're going to send it to their cousin, their friend. All the neighbors oh, are going to see. Everyone's going to be looking so, at those photos. All their then, friends, yeah. And then even, you know, you may have potential sellers that are looking at your quality of work, too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, marketing is so huge in our business. And are there, like, Instagram filters for houses? I don't know, John. Glam, bold glamour for the, I don't like the house know. to make it look that much prettier. You know, I just which have, would be totally yeah. terrible because then you show up and you're like, this house is not yeah. what I looked at online. Yeah. Do you want to know something funny? When I first started, I was an assistant for an agent, and he would give me a camera, and mm -hmm. I would have to go take photos, and I would sit in the like in the go in the corner of the the room and yeah. try to make it look bigger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then yeah. I would take the SIM card and have to get have like a converter and then <laughs> upload it. And make the flyer on Microsoft Publisher. That totally dates me right now. But like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah, we used to take around photos. Like use uh, like some of the cleanup tools. Yeah, to like, totally. There's a spot on the wall. Clean it up. And yeah. this was also when I started. It was before um, MapQuest mm -hmm. and navigation. And so there was a Thomas guide. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> I remember Thomas guide too. But that, and so I'd have to map time. out the agents. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, their route for their showings and schedule the showings and so forth. So now it's like the address is there. You click the link and your GPS takes you. Yep. So it's our business has come so far. Totally. Yeah, it really has. Um, let's talk about repeat business. Mm -hmm. Like what are you doing? Are there any tricks or tips that you can share with others? Yeah. Uh, just love on the people that gave you the opportunity to work mm -hmm. with them and that privilege to help them buy or sell a house. And so I continue to stay in touch with all of my clients. I do things that um, are easy for me to do because when I say easy, it's easy to relate to them and something that is easy for them to come to. So I do a lot of client events mm. and I host, you know, events for them to bring their families to. I don't want a client like to host a party where they're going to feel like they have to spend money to attend by spending a hundred bucks for a babysitter right. and, and make it difficult for them to come. So I do events where even at listings, I'll have an ice cream truck and I'll tell, you know, my past clients, Hey, I'm going to be at, you know, a house around the block from you guys come by, have free ice cream. The neighbors come. Mm -hmm. I'll do, um, events that support new businesses in the community. So for example, in Rancho Bernardo, there's this new place called the golf bar okay. and they have golf simulators inside. It's a really cool place. And so I, um, hosted an event there for mm -hmm. my clients to all come have a Sunday fun day. It was Father's Day themed. That's cool. And they were able just to have a dad's a, can all golf. Yeah, a Sunday, the balls. Mm -hmm, a Sunday fun day on me. I do things that are valued to people, so yeah. it's not just shot skis and 
you know, oh, look at me, your agent. It's like, what I want to do something for you. In the past, uh, for Mother's Day, it was a it was a Mother's Day theme slash women that have been influential in the community that I wanted to praise. And so I rented out a nail salon mm. and had them all come for a manicure pedicure throughout the day. That's cool. So I just love on the people that have loved on me by referring business to me. And I think that is the easy it's and it comes naturally. Like yeah. One of my spiritual gifts is hospitality. I just, I really love serving and taking care of people. Cool. And so it comes naturally to host yeah. people and do things for others. You know, whether it's their client or not. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> half the time it's friends that come too. And it's like, come everyone, I want you to be together. And I really like, you know, I've built a community within a community with my business. That's cool. And I think that's really special as 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 something that, I, I, it wasn't intentional to happen, but mm-hmm. there is now a community within my business. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many clients you had over the years? Uh, gosh, um, I've done about 200 transactions, um, give or take. We're, we're teetering around that in the last seven years. And uh, gosh, I have about 400 people in my database that I constantly stay in touch with. Mm-hmm. So. Um, Any funny stories about someone you're like, I'll never work with them again. You don't have to name names, but like, are there any like transactions that went so bad, not on your part, but like they were just so hard to work with and you're just like, oh, oh my I'm gosh, I'm going to do this again. Oh. <laughs> like, I don't care if I ever get repeat business from them. I've had people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Put uh, you on the spot there, yeah, Kimberly. Um, people that are a little crazy and then I Googled them and found out why they're crazy because they didn't want TMZ to find them, that they were like an ex-celebrity. Oh, and no. like you would never, ever, I mean, they're like, I mean, have totally changed things. Totally changed. Oh, wow. Like total alter identity. Wow. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I've had, and they're crazy, and you're like, you're crazy for some reason. Like, yeah, like I'm not working um, with you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we've had um, agents in our office, obviously, People that you suspect cartel money, (laughs) you know, and so, but hey, their kids want to go to good private schools too, you know. So, um, I mean, they might have killed somebody, but I uh, mean, (laughs) think about it, John. I mean, if you're trying to market a twenty-five million dollar house in the ranch, like, there's there's only like several people that could buy that. Yeah, I mean, Russian czars and yeah, so. um, Billionaires, John. All I gotta say is there's a list. For a list, there's there's right. lists everywhere, as you know, in marketing. Yep. So you can buy names to market to those people, and it's true. I know people. I don't do it as part of my business plan, but I know people that specifically will market to the spouses of billionaires, really, and market to them schools. Interesting. And doing retargeting ads, so they see the schools, like, which then oh, leads them to the community, which is so big and top of mind for. For the yeah. moms. That's like what they're focused on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so they can get into their head and they can, you know, influence the husband and the dad. Yeah. And, you know, and it just kind of starts from there. Yeah. You got to get really That's an interesting niche creative when you're marketing at those really high price points. So me and Preston used to send out these envelopes um, to high end like real estate um, homes like and the envelopes were like, they looked like a wedding invitation. Mm. We hand we have somebody handwrite it all, calligraphy, mm-hmm. right? And then it was like, you're cordially invited to lower your rate or whatever it was, right? Yeah. Lower your payments. Um, we, we, you know, we specialize in luxury homes. Mm-hmm. Call us today, you know, John Maddox and my number. Yeah. And we would mail those just to like the most expensive zip codes. And, you know, we got, I think I did like a bunch of deals from it. Oh, wow. Yeah bunch of deals like because yeah. you because it's all about first you got to get through the first layer of defense which mm-hmm. is just tossing it right or opening it mm-hmm. and so they're going to open it if it looks like a wedding invitation mm-hmm. then they open it and they're like oh this is a nice you know handwritten which nobody writes handwritten letters yeah. anymore. nice handwritten letters so i'll at least read it so that's the second yeah. part is reading it and then it's like well yeah i could probably lower my rates let me at least call this person that took all the effort to do this mm-hmm. And then, boom, we get a call, and it was a $3 million loan or whatever. Yeah. So stuff like that. Like, like I think marketing for me is like also just how much effort are you putting into it mm-hmm. versus just buying a lead or yeah. you know, spending a campaign on Google or whatever. Yeah. 
And there's got to be a little bit of fun element to it, you know, yeah. having fun with it. I mean, my client events are they're marketing events too, but we're having fun at it also. So and knowing like who your demographic is, so like yeah. how if you're like marketing to a certain age group and mm-hmm. you could that you knew went to a university that you know maybe were were in a fraternity or sorority. Yeah. You could do something with that. Like, there's probably a ton of different ideas that you could, yeah, you could market. The big thing right now, and that they're teaching, or at least I don't know if it's a spin on it, or you know, that is stop marketing to the masses. Mm-hmm. Market to your avatar. Yeah. So I've been hearing that over and over and again. I don't know if you guys are hearing that with who your channels. Heard that. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, tell so, us more about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, who's your avatar? Like, who's your demographic? Who who's your ideal client? Mm. You're going to enjoy what you do a lot more, and mm-hmm. so is that person. And you're gonna be happy doing what you're doing if right. it's your ideal client. And that goes, you know, for lenders like working with agents. Like, who right. is your ideal agent you want to work with? And for me, when it comes to working with lenders, I want to work with lenders that are. I have a lot in common with and that are easy to hang out with and that totally get me like I'm, you know, when I'm doing five million dollars, you know, just to to totally get it. I mean, sometimes lenders want to offer value by like, hey, can I take you to lunch or hey, can I, you know, do you want to go get happy hour at four o'clock? And like, you don't know me. I have to pick up my kids like that's not important to me. Like if you want to work with, you know, me and have an opportunity to to get my business, like find out like what I need. Yeah. I need my kid to be better at hitting the ball in baseball. Yeah. So your kid plays baseball. <laughs> Can you take him to the batting cages? Yeah. Like actually one of the lenders I work with, like he did mm. that. I was like, That's hey, cool. he's like, do you want to grab lunch? I'm like, no. Can you take Alex to the batting cage with your son? Yeah. Like that means way more to me. That offers, that's helping my son. Yeah. Um, then And helping you. Yeah. And definitely and helping. And you yeah. have a little time. Yeah, too. exactly. So right. I, it's, yeah, finding that, that rapport. Um, mm-hmm. and, and things that that person, what, what they value. And it's like, Hey, if you want to help my kid, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. you will totally get my business. Like that is That's huge. Cool. So, and mm-hmm. that just takes a little effort, right? That just takes mm-hmm. like the thought of, you know, me back to what we were talking about earlier, asking questions mm-hmm. and saying like, not just me, like ask and asking the right questions, Yeah, you know, yeah. because it's, it's true. We all, we all have needs. We all have things that we'll have doorways that will open if you, you know, have the right code, which yeah. the code could be like you just said, my son needs, my son loves to yeah. play, play baseball. Right? So, yeah. And so he's into golf right now. So anyone, <laughs> anyone wants golfs? to teach him how to play <laughs> golf, to work with Kimberly. Yeah. I'll yes. give you my next deal. <laughs> That's funny. I just makes me think of a story. Um, you know, we've all heard of Gary Vaynerchuk. Right? Yeah, totally. And Gary Vaynerchuk was up on stage and someone was like, how do I, what's the best way to get a hold of you? And he's like, Honestly, he's like, I just started a wine business. Mm-hmm. And so if you want to reach me, try through that avenue. And he didn't like give out his email or anything like yeah. that. But he's like, that I'm passionate about this wine business that mm-hmm. I have. And so, you know, I mean, I and I've I've even seen people like reach out to me about the tequila thing yeah. and try to get my attention. Yeah. But this is like mortgages and tequila. And so, of course, I open that email. Yeah. Right. And and so like, but it's so true. If you can find out what someone's like into, what their needs are. Mm-hmm what their passions are, then it's going to totally open the door. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's good. Yeah. What's your biggest challenge right now? (sighs) I don't, I feel like I don't have enough time in the day. Just wish there was more hours in the day. We could buy more hours. So yeah. (laughs) Just make it 28. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can only drink so much Celsius and (laughs) stay up late. No, I just wish there was more hours in the day. I feel like there's opportunity all around us. And I think that's my biggest struggle is like, I just can't get to it all. So it's, you know, being better at delegating and time management yeah. and so forth. So that's something that I'm really trying to dial down my calendar to like 30 minute increments and really just maximize. And, um, you know, when my husband was, he, my husband's in the Navy and when he was deployed, you know, it's interesting how I literally had like so many hours to get things done because I had the kids in the afternoon and mm-hmm. it was just, I was a single parent household. So it's interesting when you're under stress or when you're about to go on a vacation, like how efficient you become, right? Oh, yeah. True. And uh, so I'm, you know, have that mindset of like, okay, and actually I'm going on vacation and I just opened three million dollars in escrow yesterday. So it's like when <laughs> it you're about, happens, it's like yeah. you know having that mindset of of you know having to we're, we're leaving on a vacation and I need to get as much as done as I can. So yeah, um, more hours in the day would be great, <laughs> and of course more inventory would be helpful. Yeah. Um, what I'm experiencing right now working with buyers is in the areas like Carmel Valley, PQ, Poway. These are really hot areas right now. Right. And 
Um, we're Great seeing, schools. Yeah. And we're yeah. seeing everything in escrow, hundred to two hundred thousand dollars over. As, you know, we're back to twenty twenty two spring prices. Mm. So um, when buyers are are looking at the value, they're like, okay, we're right at back to twenty twenty two. Yeah. Um, so that's that's yeah, yeah. And they're not building any new houses. No, no, they're so, not. So, they, you know, there was people that talked about the silver tsunami. Have you heard of this? Before? No. It, it was like this thought that like all these back to what you were talking about, retired, you know, pe- working with people that mm-hmm. were older seniors. Yeah. That a lot of these seniors were just going to, you know, flood the market with their homes as they go into retirement homes and retirement communities. Mm-hmm. But that just, just didn't happen. No. And I don't see it happening. It's not like no. there's no real like up. I mean, there might be a little bit of a trend line up, but I think a lot of them are either going to stay in their home till they die mm-hmm. or they're going to, you know, and then pass their home on to their kids. And then. Right. Who knows what they'll do with it, but um, yeah. So like I, the listings, there's no nobody making new homes, mm-hmm. nobody building new homes, hardly. All the homes that are being purchased are either being redone, renovated, back on the market, or they're doing density, so they're turning them into not even a single family anymore. They're yeah. turning into apartment building or you know eight units or whatever, or adding like a bunch of ADUs to them. So they're not even really like a single family type of home. And so like that starter home, that family home. Like where it's just so hard. Yeah, yeah, and so hard. And you see what's going on in our neighborhood. Like every four houses, there's a porta potty in front of it, and you're like, mm-hmm. they're not moving because they're adding on, and they have yeah. contractors at their house. And going back to the seniors, I have a few clients, and they're on wait lists to get into independent living wow. for two to three years. Yeah, so, so that's probably part. Yeah, of it Yeah, so that's part of it, and um, also the cost of these places to move to. Uh, are extremely expensive, so it's actually right. more cost effective to get an at home nurse and mm-hmm. healthcare company to come to you. And so, there's or even like your kids move back in, or yeah, like one of your kids, right? Like, that's mm-hmm. probably what's happening too, yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of, um, of I, I've heard you know, the 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 millennial in the basement that lives in your mom's mm-hmm. basement, like that's a real thing, like, yeah. So, oh, yeah. so your these parents aren't needing to, they're like, you're living with me, but you're gonna help me out, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's probably part of that yeah. too, so. There's no silver tsunami. No, no. And I, what I'm seeing also, too, is um, a lot of people are building ADUs for themselves mm-hmm. and for their kids. Right. To, and we also had a client that what they're going to do, I found this interesting, is they're a um, young couple. They're going to buy a condo. And their parents were looking at the condo because when they have a family, they're going to flip houses. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, I haven't seen that strategy yet. So, yeah. yeah, you're looking for your first. Can you imagine looking for your first condo? And and your parents are looking at it with you, and your parents have the mindset that they're going to switch with you. Interesting, like, yeah. As soon as you get married, have kids, and yeah, you switch, yeah. Yeah. So we've seen that as something, and um, and then yeah, as you know, San Diego is such a huge military area that right. the military owns most of our real estate in San Diego. Mm-hmm. So there's nowhere really else to build, and then we go to the ocean. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, very uh, yeah contained. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just have to get a little bit more strategic and. And find some of those off-market opportunities before they get on the MLS. If you're representing buyers, and yeah. and make it a win-win for everybody. Totally. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure you have mortgage brokers that come try to get your business, mm-hmm. right? Do you have any stories about like what's the worst or, or best? What was the worst or best approach? Um, I think one of the worst approaches was, um, well, I, yeah, they're like, hey, can I come work an open house with you? And I'm like. Hey, why don't we go to coffee first? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why would I want to hang? I've never met you. You're a total stranger. Yeah. Like, why would I want to sit with you at an open house for three hours when I never met you? So that was kind of yeah. like, whoa, like a little too forward. Yeah, and especially because the open house is just you two. Yeah. And it's like, this is like more yeah. commitment. Than right. And then and with people. Exactly. Around. Yeah. Exactly. So I think going to, hey, can I sit in an open house with you? Maybe, hey, can I? You know, can we grab coffee or can I bring you coffee? Yeah, you know, better. I mean, right? I think that's really hard for to, to pull an agent out of their office or what they're doing. So, like, come to them. Yeah, is a better strategy. Right. Um. So that was that was the recent one. I was like, Are you serious? Like, I don't so, know. Like, people don't get that. Like, you know, like, why don't they flip it around and think like, What would I want someone mm-hmm. to do for me if they want yeah. my business? Which which goes to like. Can I bring you in and out burger? Mm-hmm. Or can I bring you a coffee with some donut or some yeah. a breakfast burrito? Like whatever, right? And like yeah. figuring that out first, and then making it so hard for them to say no, right? Yeah. Versus like, can you get in your car, drive all the way, meet me middle, like 
right? Yeah. Like yeah. halfway through San Diego in traffic. Yeah. And then maybe like to for what? Like I don't need yeah. like you need me, I don't need you. Like, yeah. Yeah. Figure out what their pain points are. Like I don't like doing I mean, not really a big huge fan of doing open houses. Yeah. I don't like putting signs out. Like go put my signs out. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> like I know it sounds silly, but I mean, think about what is something. Ask them like what what are your pain points. Yeah. Ask ask if you're if you're cold calling on an agent. Say what are your pain points right now in your business? And they're obviously yeah. going to say inventory. Like what's something you don't like doing? You know. I don't like putting signs in yards. So and, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm just being silly here. Just no, more or less, that, you know, that is a different strategy. I mean, think right. about what people need versus. I mean. Really, it comes down to what is your degree of separation? What makes you different than the 10 other lenders that called me today? Right. So, I, yeah, I want to know what makes you different. What was the, what was the best one? Mm, well, I think anyone that's willing to, I mean, Padre tickets are always nice, right? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, you know, the lender that I'm working with right now, um, I think that was really cool that he helped my kid, you know, be yeah. a better player at baseball and stuff. So, and it was so easy because he was going to take his son to the Such batting cages. Thing, so it's yeah. like stuff like that. Like that's important to me. Yeah. Um. So yeah, being creative is definitely, you know, that that's the way to like take five minutes, get out a piece of paper, and write down some ideas versus just shooting from the hip. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you're gonna go approach somebody, unless you're really damn good at like you know, cold approach yeah. and like, you know, you're funny and you have this yeah. charm. Like think about what it is, like you just said, like yeah. what it is that could help this person. Right. What could be my approach? What could, and then do it, you know, yeah. practice it and yeah. figure it out. So John, where do you get your entrepreneur spirit from? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was a son, I'm a son of a preacher, as you know. Yes. And not the kind that like, you know, makes everyone empty their pockets, right. you know, and mm -hmm. does the big, big rah-rah mm -hmm. offering. So we didn't have a ton of money. Mm -hmm. And I look back and I think, I remember a moment when I wanted a skateboard mm -hmm. because I was a skater, skate rat, you know, and I was mm -hmm. like probably 13, something like that, uh, 12, 13. Which your nephew is so much like you. It's is, funny, yeah. Is he? Yeah. He is, yeah, he, that's a whole other topic. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, lo love the kid. Uh, but like, uh, so I, I was, I remember a moment when I wanted a skateboard and I couldn't, I couldn't get it. my uh -huh. dad or mom were like, wait for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I got, so then Christmas came and it wasn't a skateboard, it was just a deck, right? And, mm -hmm. I, and I was still like, you know, that's all they could afford. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I was really kind of bummed. And then I, and then I think, so then my mom took me um, to a little specialty store, like those kind of stores that have the weird, unique cards and like little candles and you know, funny like sayings that you can hang in your house yeah. and, you know, like, like a Hallmark store or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah but it was yeah. like, it was like more of a mom and pop mm -hmm. store and it had, and, and I remember this basket of, of bubble gum that was like in a, like near the, the, the count, the counter. Mm -hmm. And it was like a penny per, per wrapped piece of bubble gum. And mm -hmm. I, I think I had $5 saved, which is crazy. Cause that's so nothing now. But I had $5 that I got 500 pieces of gum mm -hmm. I was, and I basically cleaned them out. Mm hmm. And uh, I put them all in my backpack and I sold them for, I made 50 bucks, sold them 10 cents each. Wow. And I got 50 bucks and I was able to go buy like some skateboard stuff. So I did that like every week at school and I was just mm -hmm. making money and I was just like hustling bubble gum in all my classes and uh, like turning, you know, five bucks into 50 bucks before the lunch bell rang. Everyone, I'm literally my first four classes, everyone would buy like 10, they'd all have a dollar for their lunch. And they just start buying yeah. the gum. Yeah. And then I got totally busted by the principal and he called me in and was like, can't be selling gum in the school. So I got my first regulatory action when I was, uh, I think I was 12 or 13. Yeah. And then I knew that I knew, I knew how to make money. It was like yeah. really an arbitrage deal. It was like, I knew how to find the gum and I knew where the demand was. The demand was in my school. And yeah. Then, you know, so I, I kind of always wanted to do arbitrage in a product. Yeah. And so when I got into the mortgage business, I was good at sales and, and doing all that as a mortgage broker. But then when I went um, and I went back to the, the wanting to have a product, mm. I was like, I need to do wholesale. Mm. And then I could have a product and I don't have to be a, the, the, the front person, yeah. you know. And, and so we did wholesale and then obviously tequila. Like tequila yeah. now is my product and in, in, in a side, side hustle. But um, – I don't know. I think my dad was always a visionary and mm -hmm. always doing up to something, you know, mm -hmm. up to some cool little yeah. project besides doing running the church. But um, 
yeah, so I, I saw him do different things. And yeah. I think I was programmed in a, in a, at a young age to, to like think out of the box. Yeah. But really was that moment of the, the bubble gum that, yeah. <laughs> that made that me. That was your defining moment. Realize that I could I could sell stuff and wow. and make money out of basically nothing. Yeah, you know? yeah, so. that's funny. My son actually uh, he got in trouble for this was last year when that drink Prime was like really popular, and so yeah. he was taking it to school and selling it. And so he had a similar. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, <laughs> what you weren't able to get him like what he needed, like you weren't able to buy him. A oh yeah, no, or... <laughs> we did the yeah no yeah. No, but that's yeah, cool that yeah. he even without like growing. I mean, because you guys, you know, you make pretty good money, I imagine. So, um, <laughs> but like, but yeah, that's cool. I mean, you, yeah. cause you have to kind of encourage that yeah. out of your kids. Same with my kids. Like mm -hmm. they haven't lived, you know, a, a life like I did, mm -hmm. but you know, they, if you put in rules and like, you know, no, I'm yeah. just not going to give you free money, like, yeah. you know, make them pay for some of their car or yeah. whatever, like they can have skin in the game. Yeah. We're not paying for our kids college and everyone's like, why aren't you saving for your kids college? And, <laughs> and that was just something my husband and I, we both paid our way through school yeah and if there's a will there's a way and i mean mm -hmm. we'll help them most certainly my parents help you know co-sign for loans for me and and help me right w whether it was paying my car insurance or help help me but they didn't actually like say we're gonna pay for college it was it's something that i want my kids if they want that that they're gonna go to work for it and Skin maybe and somehow it'll get paid for yeah um but there was definitely i think that degree felt so in that piece of paper when i got that piece of paper <laughs> Felt, you work for it. I worked so hard for it. Yeah. And and my husband too, his parents, they um he did a he went to the military and did a military ROTC scholarship. Mm -hmm. And so that helped pay for him. But his parents also were like, We don't like we're not saving, we don't have a fund for you for school. And so I think that, you know, definitely, you know, made our shells a little bit harder and also gave us a little bit more skin in the game for what we wanted. It's good. And so, I mean, everyone's got their different strategy and tactic if they're going to pay for college and who mm -hmm. knows, my kids are a lot younger than yours, but if that'll even, if it'll be totally paid for by yeah. then or what, you right. know, you so never know. yeah. And it was a really good feeling too when I paid off my student loans. So it's cool. Yeah. 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 I've, I've heard some people say that like, I'm not going to pay for my kids' college and make them get student loans. Mm -hmm. And then if they graduate and they get good grades, yeah. I'll pay it off. All yeah. Off. Yeah. And then it gives them that motivation to like finish and to to be great at it and to get right. a certain GPA or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Because otherwise, they'll just go party and yeah. not even not yeah. finish or whatever. Well, that's where you build a lot of your work ethic study, you know, like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because you have no one. You know, making you do your get up at certain time yeah, and, and show up. And that's where you learn accountability. Yeah. I mean, you actually have to pay for school now. So you have to be accountable to that. Right. To show up and to finish it out. And then, you know, it was important and it, it still is, but we're seeing it necessarily with so much tech and people as YouTube stars and college degree isn't necessary. But, mm. you know, it was it was really important at, at a point to get you into the door. Right. And so ha knowing that, too. You know, um, for me, going to USD, being part of the USD Real Estate Alumni Network, it really helped when I graduated. I was so blessed to have um, job offers mm -hmm. from alumni That's around so cool. San Diego. And I was in the driver's seat of where I wanted to work. Because you and, had so many options. Versus yeah. like, oh, here's this one little option. I right. don't know what else to do. Right. Yeah. yeah. So actually, I went into commercial real estate right out of college. And that was fascinating to work mm -hmm. more on the corporate side. Mm -hmm. One of my biggest, I don't want to say like regrets, but if I could have made the decision over again, mm -hmm. I chose the, rather than ch choosing a specialty because I, I could have chose retail and commercial, industrial, office leasing, office sales, um, or apartments, multifamily. What'd you do? I went to work for the person versus the specialty because that the guy was just amazing. I was like, I want to work for this guy. He's really awesome. And it was industrial leasing. And it was so blah. <laughs> <laughs> it was not fun. I mean, it was just, you know, I, I like working with the public and yeah. I like marketing something that's beautiful. And and my job was preparing presentations in a big boardroom. Mm to these big huge like Amazon or something owners like that. Yeah. yeah no they're massive real estate portfolios mm -hmm. owners they weren't you know it wasn't it, you weren't talking directly to the consumer right. or the 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 tenant so yeah. um 
looking it's the back, corporate board or whatever. It was yeah. super. It was too corporate for me, and that, yeah. and then I, and then I have that entrepreneur spirit like you do, and I was like, ah, I don't can't know if I, this. I can't clock in and clock out every day. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. So I tried it. It was a really good experience, and I'm so glad well, I had who's that this experience. This person you can shout out to that. Oh, that, <laughs> that was Chris Pascal. Yeah, he works at CP okay. Richard Ellis. So I just remember he was really cool. All the guys in that that group are really cool. Um, and back then and still like there's very few females in commercial real estate. Right. So I thought that was really cool to get an opportunity to, to work in that environment cool. and, and, and see the commercial side of it. And it was really cool because it came full circle. Recently, I just sold a multifamily property, um, nice. across the street from USD. Oh, cool. That's <laughs> so awesome. yeah, that was, that was really neat. And that was a really cool full circle moment to, to how many units was it? Four units. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Man, those things, I'm sure that those things go for a lot. Yeah, that that was uh, 2.7. So, yeah. It's crazy how much prices have gone You know up. who was the buyer? Um, well, I don't know if many of the buyers who actually were looking at it. I don't think this buyer actually had students at USD, but a lot of the buyers are parents. Really? Mm-hmm. And they buy like four unit, but then their kid's going to stay in one, and mm-hmm. they can rent all the other three out yeah. and pay for the whole thing. Yeah. So, so smart. Most of the buyers that were calling were like, I have a student at USD, or my son's going to law school, and mm-hmm. we don't want to pay rent anymore. We want to buy property. And they were real estate investors, the parents. That's cool. So I thought that was neat. So what are some secrets to your success, some habits you do and – yeah. yeah, you can share. Um, I think one of the secrets is to have patience, and nobody talks about patience on podcasts. It's yeah, um, so boring. Everyone right? talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they talk about the hustle, the grind. You know, the five a.m. club, which I'm a part of a five a.m. club, right? That is one <laughs> I of my hate secrets. Five a.m. It's the worst time. Yeah, ever. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I did, I did five a.m. for like five years, and then I burned out so bad. <laughs> I'm such a night person yeah. that five a.m. is yeah. like closer to when I go to bed. Yeah, than when I get up. <laughs> no, I'm a morning person, but that just it eats at you for a while. So yeah, I think patience, having like patience, and just seeing that, especially if you're in this for the. I mean, I started. I started selling real estate at, you know, a lot of people get in when they're older as a yeah. second career. Right. And so I started when my, my kids were babies, which is crazy when I look at pictures and they were, you know, two and three years old when I started and now they're 10 and 11. So they're like, we're all like growing up together. Like I'm growing a business and they're <laughs> mm-hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm. And uh, so having patience and knowing that, you know, it's all going to see through all your hard work that you're doing, the marketing dollars that you're putting into your business and just building it is knowing that, perseverance and having that is a virtue um habits though going back to habits yeah, a lot of it is is being disciplined with your schedule and, and yeah. really trying to stay with your schedule i'm really trying to incorporate fun into my life <laughs> <laughs> and not take life so serious so um we're is going that important i think it's important yeah yeah and i think that is a quality that i wish i could turn down a little bit with the intensity mm-hmm. but it, If I didn't have the intensity, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have the ambition and I wouldn't, you know, have the success I've had. Right. But it's knowing like, okay, like we're on, I don't want to necessarily, you know, count all my eggs before they hatch, but like we're, we're doing well. Like you can look, you can look back at your sales and you can look back at your history and your patterns and you're doing pretty well. You're, you should be able to do this for the next couple of years. So have a little fun. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, I think all of us, you know, if you don't have your fitness, you don't have a business. So you really got to take care of your mind, body and soul and really so hard to um, some people are programmed to be fit mm-hmm. in fitness. Like they, they, wa- they grew up watching their parents do yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Not me. Mm-mm. Insane. I mean, I, Not know, me. I love my parents, but I didn't see them at the gym or doing running or do anything. Mm-mm. Right. Like. I have friends that they run with their kids and they run, you mm-hmm. know, and their kids now run, mm-hmm. you know, marathons and they're only 15 or whatever. And yeah. you're like, but it's hard for people, I think, as, especially as they get older to say like, oh crap, I need to, Yeah. it's, it's slipping away. Like, yeah. I need to get fit. And to your point of like how important it is to have a fit mind, but fit body and it all kind of is all entangled together. Yeah. Like if you don't have all those different elements, then you're, you're, you're going to be lacking in other yeah. ways, you know? Yeah. I struggle with, I mean, I'm open about it, but I struggle with anxiety and I calm, you know, you can't just use tequila. <laughs> <laughs> it helps a little bit. It helps for sure. Uh, but I, yeah, I'm not going to, I, yeah, it's not the perfect magic pill. Um, but exercise really helps me clear my head. Yeah. 
And yeah, I didn't even know it was a tool really until after I had kids and I was like, I, I need to clear my head. And, yeah. you know, I mean, then comes Peloton, which <laughs> I did actually really well with Peloton stock. Did you? So I bought Peloton stock on March 13th when our kids came home from school and school, they're like, you're going to have to homeschool your kids. Is it 2020? 2020, March 13th. You're like, oh, I think this is going to be good. Uh, well, every text message I got was from a lot of my friends that, um, stay home and go to the gym all day and they're like what am I gonna do I have to be at home with my husband all day (laughs) and I can't go to a gym and so I gave out 10 Peloton codes that day because I had a Peloton I was like one of the first people had a Peloton treadmill and so um, I gave out 10 Peloton codes and I called my financial guy and I said move all of my savings into Peloton stock and he said Kim I don't advise it's that. Risky. Like you need to sign off on this. Like it's not was that even. Before, what was the day when it all crashed? It was like in. Was it in March? It, it was, was like, at March thirteenth. And everything was just dumping. That was like the Friday that they sent your kids mm-hmm. home with all of their books, and were like, "Yeah, we yeah. don't know when your kids coming back to school." And the and the market was just. <sighs> yeah, and the grocery stores had lines, and Costco, and the toilet paper. I remember my so. friend. I call my friend who loves buying stock. Uh-huh. This guy Pete, and he was like. I'm like, dude, what what's going on? Like, you you watch the stock market all the time. He's like, buy, <laughs> buy everything. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, yeah. just whatever yeah. you do, just buy it all. Buy whatever you, you buy it. Yes, Home Depot, buy this, buy. And I'm like, okay, dude, cool. Yeah. He's like, I gotta go. And I clicked and I hung up. And I was like, okay. And I just started moving money into like different stocks mm-hmm. too. And I was like, I should buy some commodities too. And I started buying a little of that, but. Yeah, it was it was a good. Yeah, I mean when the, it was like down, everything was down so yeah. much. That's when you buy, right? Yeah, you, well, that's what they, they say. <laughs> yeah, you make your money when you buy. Yeah, yeah. Well, it helped me with a down payment for our house that we bought. So that's so cool. Yeah, so that was good one of on my, you to see that. Like yeah, that, that um, Peloton thing was a yeah. big trend. I'm a, an emotional. I buy stocks and investments off emotion, which is so wrong I and so do what they say. At stock. I, I so I just do what everyone else like. I see the trends. Mm. So, yeah. My you, problem is I see a trend and then I miss the sale. Uh-huh. Of it. Like my kids love Snapchat and I was like, oh, I'm going to buy Snapchat stock. Yeah. And I did. And it like shot up and then then went down. And yeah. I'm like, but I still own it. So I'm like, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, you know. What about um, what's your favorite failure story? Like where it turned into a success? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, it's hard. I was actually telling Ryan this earlier that I – um. I, I can't see anything as a failure. Like, I don't know why if it's not a word in my yeah. programming. Um, I, I really, I mean, maybe a mistake. I, yeah, I, like anything like that you like, you like go, oh, crap, and that happened. And then you're like, but then you're like, okay, I never did that again. Or I learned from it. Or, you know what I mean? Like, there's usually in entrepreneurs' lives, there's a way, there's something that you kind of like almost down to the 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 smallest thing of when like, Edison was, you know, doing the light bulb and he just had to do it 300, whatever, how many times it was, right? Yeah. Failed that many times yeah. till he was one step closer to a win. Yeah. You know, like maybe was it like your first client? You didn't, you know, something happened? Like, I just had something happen yesterday. It's like, tell us. There we go. <laughs> but it, as long as you believe that, like, it's going to turn into something cool. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of my neighbors told me that another neighbor, I live in a, predominantly neighborhood where everyone's original owners from the 70s so they're like in their 90s okay and so they said so and so parties what great for parties <laughs> yeah so totally yeah um they said oh so and so is in hospice and you know their family's coming in they're gonna need to sell their house like kim my neighbors love me and they're like you should go leave their information or if you leave give me you know their information and i'll leave it for them and i said yeah. oh, i'll just drop like thinking moms and hot you know just yeah, that's what I do is I market, right? Like yeah. I'm just trying to be a resource. It, right. So I leave the package and um, someone hears me and they come out the door and uh, this man says, uh, can I help you? And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I heard about your mom. And he's like, come inside. <laughs> and his mom was right there like dying. Oh, no. <laughs> and I felt so bad because like I was just like, no, I didn't. I'm, I'm so sorry. So yeah. I ended up bringing them dinner and 
Um, so I don't want to say it was a failure, but it was just one of those things in our business that like you turn it into a good, right? Now yeah, you like turn it into a good. With- so, uh, but it was really embarrassing because I was like, <laughs> I did not want to be there. I felt like I felt really gross, like to be there as like, oh, I'm a realtor looking like to sell. Ambulance, ambulance yeah, chaser. totally. Yeah. And I was, and so, but you know, turned it around and 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 like, gosh, I feel so bad for them. I mean, that's that's really sad. And and so, um, but stuff like that, you know, happens where you're just yeah. You, you, you think you're trying to be in your embar- I was embarrassed. Like, so I've had a lot of embarrassing things happen, um, yeah. you know, and yeah. showing houses and stuff like that. So that, that happens a lot. <laughs> um, scary things happen too. And when you show so, houses, yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah. And you this, know, especially being a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. As um, a, and a short woman. Yeah. <laughs> five yeah. Foot tall, right? Yeah. I mean, what job does somebody like sit by themselves? I mean, I don't do this anymore. I actually always have people with me, but, and, and people take offense. Like I'll have people call and they'll say, well, you know, people don't call off signs anymore. They see a house on, on Zillow. some app or whatever, yeah. but like occasionally I'll get a sign call. Yeah. Hi, I'm standing in front of, you know, your listing and your name's on the sign. And I wanted to see if you can come over and show it to me. Well, Hi, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know anything about you. I don't know, you know, it, like you could be a mass murderer. And I've had to say like, hey, would you mind meeting me at my office first? Are you li-? And they're just like, I just want to see it. And I said, you know, That's with all due respect. Yeah. And I'm I'm somebody's mom. I'm someone's daughter. Like, I don't know you. Would you yeah. want your daughter just to go open up a house for some random stranger? And so right. when you when you phrase it that way, people are, oh, yeah, like, I was just curious. I wanted to see what they did to the remodel in their kitchen. Like, it's just a lot it's of times. It's probably usually a neighbor, too, that's yeah, nosy, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, but, but you never can be too careful. No, no. So I think that's something. And Unless we're, you carry a big, mm-hmm. big sidearm. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's something I don't publicly say, oh, yeah, I have protection. But <laughs> right. um, I'm really good about, you know, texting my husband or family members like, hey, I'm here. And this is and yeah. then when I'm leaving my office and I'm going somewhere. So, I mean, I definitely like I want people to track me. Yeah. And so um, they always know where I'm going and what I'm showing. And and so and then bringing lenders back in, I do like lenders to come to open houses and they have an opportunity to talk about rates and yeah. talk about their products and gain clients, mm-hmm. too. So I think it is beneficial for lenders to come to open houses and broker caravans um, with the agents, especially, you know, if you, you shouldn't be in a house by yourself. So there's just no. weirdos. No. Yeah. We actually have a Facebook page where we as agents post pictures or um, the seller will give us the ring camera of people that have walked in that we think have stolen mm. or are suspicious or doing. So we all look out for each other um, yeah. when weird stuff kind of happens. And when we, it's sad we, that that has to I know. be something that people yeah. should watch out for. Yeah. What's sad is, you know, it, it makes a lot of people not want to do open houses and so right. forth. And, and I see that too. I def- there's definitely an argument to that. To be had. I've had clients get medication stolen um, and things stolen out of their houses before. Wow. So, and you know, you always have that conversation with people mm-hmm. when you list their property, the things you need to do to prepare. It's not just preparing your home by staging, it's putting valuables putting away. Safe or whatever, yeah. And putting medication away. And I had a seller and she's like, I would have never thought someone would, <laughs> you know, want, want my, my Xanax. Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. So, um, that happens. And so we have to have those conversations too, those real life conversations. And also like, this is really crazy to think about, but I'm always thinking like, how am I going to escape? Like if I'm in a condo and the access is on the second story, like, is there a way out? So I'm always thinking those things too. My husband is very involved in Krav Maga and that's the, um, it's, it's, a self-defense it's a combo of different self-defenses but mm-hmm. it's what the israeli um defense forces use and it's real life training and so they'll do uh, simulations in synagogues and churches and parking lots mm. and i find it really helpful and yeah. encourage you know people haven't heard about krav maga to get involved in it yeah um because you can learn a lot just in a two-hour session two hours that could save your life yeah absolutely it's very valuable yeah that's cool. Mm-hmm. Any shout outs for anyone that helped you along the way? Uh, how about your sister, Jessica and Rachel? Because <laughs> I shout wouldn't know you. Jessica and Rachel. <laughs> I wouldn't have met you without them and um, back in the day at, at Mission and stuff. So that was a really cool chapter of everyone's lives. Yeah. And again, to 
see your success is so amazing and thank you um everyone is like thriving in life and we're all blessed to be healthy and here and made it through the crisis of the interest rates yeah call it like the um interest rate apocalypse it was so it, you know it, mm-hmm. it was better than like i think some people said two eight two thousand eight was worse but like or it was but be- was this was worse than 2008 but it was yeah it was not fun What's so crazy, John, is that we started out 2024 thinking it was going to be really slow. Mm. And we were completely blindsided thinking, oh, well, it's not going to pick up until rates go down. Yeah. It picked up and mm-hmm. rates went up. Yeah. It was, it's totally a different narrative than I would have read into. Yeah. Um, it's definitely so picking up. I, yeah, that we were, we were all blindsided. Like mm-hmm. second week of January, we're like, wait, we're multi- back to multiple offers and rates are here and they're not here. Yeah. So that's encouraging. To, I think there's some optimism you know. out there, mm-hmm. which is encouraging. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. How does someone find you? Uh, you can reach out to me on Instagram at Kimberly Cole or at Heritage Homes. It's one of the best ways through social media or you can find me um, at 858-231-4997 if people still call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully but, some people still do. Yeah, or text, so, right? Text. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm sure my info will be in, in the uh, info here. Yeah, we'll, we'll post. <laughs> we'll put some links and stuff. Ryan yeah. will get to work and, yeah. and do all yeah. that. Well, cool. Thanks yeah. for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. I appreciate it. And everyone, please like, share, subscribe, go follow Kimberly, and we'll see you on the next one. The Million Dollar Mortgage Experience Podcast. 